Zach is back. It's the Zach Gelb Show on Fox Sports 920, The Jersey. All right, welcome back in. 518 is the time in the Princeton Orthopedic Associates Studios. Want to win big on your bracket? Well, then stop. Get off the toilet right now. Whatever you're doing, get off the couch and really pay attention to this next segment. Because now joining us is one of the top handicappers. This guy is usually right on the money when it comes to the NCAA tournament, the Super Bowl, a big event in sport. He gets it right because he watches almost every game that is played, whether it's on the basketball court or on the football field. And that is Brandon Lang, who's going to join us right now, of course, from BrandonLang.com. Brandon, Zach Elb, appreciate a few minutes. And how are you? Brother, man, what's happening, kid? Nothing much. Doing great. I appreciate it. Uh, you coming on today. Your man cave. Uh, take me a little bit through that. Like, when you watch a game, how many TVs are you looking at? I have four. Oh, that's it? I thought you would be, like, probably, like, eight or nine, honestly. No, I tried it. I tried. I had six, and it was just, it was it was too much. It was, the, my your, your eyes go, it, and it, it was just too much. And I said, you know what? Screw that. Four's fine. Especially NCAA tournament, you can only watch four games at once. You don't need any more than that. And NFL, four games is about it. Because what ends up happening in the NFL is on, on BrandonLang.com, I have one best bet every day. I don't have four or five. I have one. So what ends up happening is I end up just watching that one game and not, you know, sitting in a sports book watching ten games. So for me, it, it four works. Four is perfect. You're always very confident, and your track record allows you to be very confident. How do you know that you're going to hit on these games? Well, I've had, I've, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to just stop you right there. I've had horrible, <laughs> horrible losing streaks. Um, Don't and, we all? <laughs> and the truth is, when you get a movie made about your life, and you're Brandon Lang, people expect you to win every day. And when you're picking games on a website, 365 days a year, it's impossible. You're set up to lose. And I'll give you a perfect example. I won seven straight weeks to start 2017, best run I ever had. Winning month of January, winning month of February. And the more you win, the more people that come. Sure. Well, obviously, I've lost two straight weeks. Those guys that lost two straight weeks, they didn't get the winning January and the winning February. So their taste in their mouth is, this guy sucks. He, you know what? He, he is just a piece of garbage. He can't pick his nose. He can't – so you can't win. You, you can't win enough to sustain the demand. So you just hope that when people get on board, they get the winning streak and not the losing streak. But you know the sad thing about the Internet is there's nobody out there. There's not a police officer out there writing tickets for character assassination when people just make up stuff about you that's not true. So I guess your slogan should be, because we're in South Jersey and Philadelphia, your slogan should be trust the process, right? Yeah, basically, but unfortunately people don't trust the process. They want immediate gratification now, and and it's a very unforgiving business. But I'll tell you what, the reason why I do it is because when you've hit 22 or 25 Super Bowls, that's the reason why I do it, because I know that's the one game, no matter how much you hate me, no matter how, how much I've lost, that's the one game you can t- push all your chips in and know that I'm going to get us on the right side. I've done it 22 or 25, so pretty pretty darn good 25-year run. Were you right this year? Yeah, I had, I had you know, right side of the game, New England, got lucky. You know, a lot of times uh, I've been on the right side, had needed luck. The last two Patriots Super Bowls, you've needed luck. You've needed the Malcolm Butler interception, and you've needed the Dan Quinn to tell Kyle Shanahan to run the ball three times. Because, again, forget everything that happened in that game. Forget the great comeback. Forget the two-point conversion. Forget everything. When Julio Jones makes that catch at the 22-yard line, it's first and ten, with three and a half minutes to go, if Dan Quinn gets on that headset and says, Kyle, I love you but I'm the head football coach of this football team. You are going to run it here three times. We are not going to pass. We are going to make them use timeouts, and I will roll the dice that our kicker can make a 44-yard field goal to give us a Super Bowl championship and put us up two scores. He didn't. He froze. He just let the offensive coordinator do what the offensive coordinator did, and the mistakes that Kyle Shanahan made, if you understand football, 
are of titanic proportion. We'll get the NCAA tournament in just a second, but, but I get running in on first down and losing two yards. Okay, I get that. I get the fact that you want to throw on second down. I get that. But you don't drop your quarterback in a seven-step drop when you're at the 24-yard line, and field position is everything. So he takes the seven-step drop, gets a sack. Okay, I get the fact that you want to now throw from the 36-yard line, but again, another seven-step drop. How about a three-step drop, something quick? How about, no, holding penalty, game over. It, it, it just, coaching, experience, and a little luck. Um, and unfortunately, I was on the right side of the lucky side, and it felt pretty good. Brandon Lang with us right now on the Zach Gelb Show. So I filled out my bracket yesterday, and of course, we're going to make a lot of wrong predictions, but I like to have fun with this bracket and go with the few upsets. So let's see if we're thinking the same way. The first upset I have, East Tennessee State taking down Florida. Do you like that? I like them. I like them plus the points. I like them plus the ten and a half. Um, I watch them play in their conference championship game, which is kind of a process for me. Every one of these mid-major small conference school, I always watch their conference championship game so I at least can see the team, touch it, feel it, and, and, and kind of handicap off that. They're, they're good. they got great guards. They got slashers. Um, if Florida doesn't bring their A game, that's an outright upset. I like you taking a shot there with East Tennessee State. Another place I'm going to take a shot with is the battle between Florida, Florida Gulf Coast and Florida State. We had Joe Dooley on the show last week, and I like his experienced team, especially with the experience they had last year in the NCAA tournament. How about yourself? Yeah, I went to the conference championship game. Obviously, I have a home here in Jacksonville. North Florida is 20 minutes away, and I went and watched the championship game where Florida Gulf Coast went into North Florida and beat them. And I immediately looked in the program and said, wow, this team's pretty good. How many guys they got coming back? And then I saw they got four or five starters come back. I was like, wow, this is a team I'm going to keep an eye on. And then I went and watched them play against North Florida again. Saw them up close and personal. You're right. Um, I drank the Kool-Aid last time. Uh, they beat Georgetown in, in, in a two beating a fi- 15 beating a two. I'm going to drink the Kool-Aid again. I got them going to the, to the Sweet 16. I'm, wow. uh, I'm drinking Dunk City again, brother. And that was a 14 seed. That'd be a 14 seed beating a three seed. I know the yep. seeds look a little bit weird because of that, and a lot of people wouldn't think that'd be a trendy pick. But I have to assume with what happened in 2012, a few more people could actually make that pick in this year's bracket. Yeah, they have. I've, I've, I've been watching the TV shows. Uh, some of the guys that, that get credit on ESPN, Billis and um, Seth, Seth Davis, um, he, he likes Florida Gulf Coast. Um, so, yeah, it, it is a sexy pick, uh, Dunk City. Um, out of the panhandle. Moving on with these upsets, uh, let's go to the south. Middle Tennessee over Minnesota. I like the sounds of that one as well. Yeah, that right there shows you what Vegas thinks of the committee. They think those guys better put the bong down or stop sniffing glue because when you look at that, when you look at that matchup right there, that's more of an 8-9 matchup. If you look at all the five seeds, they're all laying big numbers. Virginia's laying a 7.5 number. Notre Dame's laying a 7 number. Iowa State's laying a 6 number. But here you have the 12-5 where right now the 12 is favored by 1. So what Vegas is basically telling you when they opened up that number of Minnesota minus one, it's now been bet to Middle Tennessee State minus one, is that this is an 8-9 matchup. We, they don't view Middle Tennessee State as a 12, and what, who gets punished for that is Minnesota because they're pl- playing a much stronger team than they should, which is kind of what John Calipari alluded to when he says when you misseed someone, you're not punishing them. You're punishing a team that has to play them, and unfortunately, it, it, it's Minnesota. Middle Tennessee State's legit. I have them going to the Sweet 16 as well. So do I. I have them beating Butler and moving to the Sweet 16 before I have them losing to UNC. I'll tell you, we're agreeing too much, which scares me a lot because then we could be giving out a lot of wrong picks right now, Brandon. You know what? I always say this about brackets. I normally don't do very well in my bracket. I'm honest. I, I usually, the last year, Michigan State crushed me, as they did everyone else. But Kill I will me. tell you this. Do you remember the movie Breakfast Club? Yes. Remember at the end when Anthony Michael Hall writes the little essay for everybody and he holds it up and he kisses it because he's so happy with it? I have to admit that when I did my bracket, it's the first time in about seven years I actually picked it up and looked at it and kissed it because I like it. Love it. I mean, I really like it. <laughs> That's what I feel like every year I go, oh, I really like the bracket this year. And then by the end of the second game or so on the weekend, I end up throwing it in the paper shredder, honestly. Yeah, with everybody. It, 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 that's why they, you know, they call it the NCAA tournament bracket busters. But, but I, I, I honestly spent more time this year watching the smaller schools and the smaller conferences that I ever did, and I, and I really believe it's going to help me. And I really believe that my final four in my national championship game, I feel more 
more confident about it than of any year in the past. I really do. So what's your final four? Who do you got in the national championship game? I have, if Duke gets by SMU, which 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 be careful because SMU's legit. Agreed. Um, I got I got Villanova beating Duke. Um, I have Arizona beating Gonzaga in a rematch of the fifth game of the year where Gonzaga went down to Arizona, was a six-point favorite, and beat him by seven. They wouldn't be a six-point favorite now, but I think Arizona gets him in the rematch. Um, UCLA has lost four games all year, twice to Arizona, once at Oregon when they were healthy by two, and USC played them right after Arizona went into Poly Pavilion and beat them, so they're a little flat. Other than that, no one's been able to beat them. I think UCLA beats North Carolina, knocks off Kentucky, um, and gets to the Final Four. And Louisville has probably the easiest road to the Final Four of any team in the in the country for a, for a two seed. I got Louisville knocking off uh, Kansas unless Iowa State does it. But Iowa State's got to get by Nevada. Um, don't sleep on Nevada. Two guys you'll see in the NBA off that squad. But then uh, I have UCLA beating Louisville, Arizona beating Villanova, and we have round four, Ali Frazier, UCLA, Arizona, three of the best games I've seen all year are the first three meetings between these two, and I think the country deserves to watch the fourth. That would be something to see. I got Villanova, Arizona, Kansas, and UNC with the Zona UNC National Championship game with UNC winning. I want to get back to Louisville. Everyone loves Louisville, and I get their 24-8 and eight on the season. I don't really love them too much, though, Brandon. Well, I, they, they, have, they have deficiencies, but if they were anywhere else other than where they're at, I wouldn't have them. That region is easy for them. You look at who they have to play. Every team they match up well against. Um, they just, they, you know, I do ESPN Louisville, and, and, and the host has become a very dear friend, and we were talking back and forth. He goes, wow, what a dream draw we got. And I go, yeah, you really did for a team that lost in the, the ACC against Duke. They got a great draw. And you look at Duke. Duke didn't – listen, Duke's got a tough draw where they got to go through to get to the Final Four, which is good because I can't stand Duke. But um, Louisville's got an easy draw. I guess you don't like Grayson Allen, I'm assuming, right? No, nope. and he's from Jacksonville, <laughs> by the way. Another spoiled, another spoiled brat, Coach K, recruited. Brandon Lang with us right now for BrandonLang.com. Uh, let's just get a few more games in here. Wichita State and Dayton. I think that's going to be a very fun game, but I like Wichita State. Yeah, that, that, that's going to be a really fun game. Again, another one that Vegas said you guys are on crack. You, you look at the 10-7 matchup, and you got the 10 favored by close to 6. Vegas is like, yeah, listen, this, they, they view Wichita State as about a five seed, not a ten. So I do think they advance, although I think Dayton makes it, uh, makes it a ball game. And the game that I have to bring up, I'll be there tomorrow in Buffalo, and we're in the Princeton Orthopedic Associates studios right now. Uh, we're going to be seeing Princeton going up against Notre Dame. We all remember that upset that Princeton had over UCLA about 21 years ago, uh, back when Pete Carell was coaching. Does Princeton have a shot tomorrow, 19 in a row, to beat Notre Dame? No. Oh, no, 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 me. no. They, they struggled game, with though? 10. They struggled with 10. Um, and that was kind of a, a gauge for me saying, you know, we think of Princeton, we think, we think of the, the near upsets, we think of almost beating Georgetown, we think of the, the backdoor cut, we think about all that. I just don't think they're as good as other Princeton teams we've seen. I think Mike Bray and Notre Dame are a bit too much with that four-guard lineup. Now I have Mike Bray going to the Elite Eight again, but do you think it could be at least a close game? Yeah, I just, again, once he switched to that four-guard lineup, they've been nearly unbeatable. They should have beat Duke. They just The, 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 uh, the breakdown on the inbound play was, was the whole ball game. And uh, Notre Dame's a lot better than people think. I got one more for you. Seton Hall in Arkansas. Does Seton Hall advance the round two this year? Yeah, they do. I, I'm a big fan of what they do. And, you know, he's a great coach. You look at the fact they lost to Villanova by about 30 at Seton Hall late in the year, the adjustments they made and almost beat him in the Big East tournament. And, and uh, they're, they're in the go zone right now. I like him. I like him to beat Arkansas. Before we let you run, BrandonLang.com. Uh, favorite part about the movie all these years later about uh, two for the money. In fact, Matthew playing me and captured the <laughs> and captured the intensity of the business. I always tell people all the time, I'm 54, my wife's 44, she looks 24, she's Filipino, Asian women they don't age, brother. 
You know, 54 is a new 34, 44 is a new 24. I don't know if it's the white rice miso soup. I don't know. But if you look at Brandon, if you Google Brandon Lang's wife, she is a dime piece, body fat like 4%, completely outkicked my coverage. But I'll tell you this. I look pretty good for 54, but I'm not always going to look this good. So I get to be about 70, the head's bald, fat. I can always walk in that bedroom and say, honey, close your eyes, baby girl. Here comes Matthew McConaughey. All right, all right, all right, all right. So no matter what happens, bro, we always got that going for us. So you were basically a 15 seed and she's a two seed, correct? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Um, and But, hey, pretty rock solid 15 seed. So, no, Matt Matt was great. Matt Matt did a great job capturing. And Matt's a gambler. Matt's bet, Matt bet games. He gets the intensity of it. And if you watch that movie again and you look at how the best scene of the movie is when he's in the bar, the strip bar, and he's drinking a cocktail, and he's got the game won, and the guy fumbles, and he goes crazy. I feel that way almost every <laughs> single day. Yeah, I'll tell you the best. I'm not a big gambler. Like, I'll fill out the NCAA tournament bracket, but a friend of mine gambles, and it's always fun when he watches the game and you see him have one of those moments. It's very fun yeah. when you don't got money involved in it. No, absolutely. I did, I did a um, Stephen A. Smith, quite frankly, on ESPN2 sure. back in the day. And the show was about gambling, and he had two people on there who were against gambling. And then they had me. So they were trying to team up on me, and I had the studio audience on my side. And I said, and, and I go, you, see, your problem is you don't get gambling. So let me tell you what gambling is. Are you ready? I'm going to have Stephen A. Smith pulling a basketball hoop right into the studio right here, okay? And I want you two to go over there, and I just want you to shoot around. Well, Stephen and I here order a pizza and hang out for about 10 minutes. You guys just go over there and shoot around. And then once, once I say stop, I said both of you go to the free throw line. Now, if you make the free throw, I will give you two first-class round-trip airfare to Hawaii, a week at the Ritz-Carlton on me if you make one free throw. Go. That feeling that you have inside right before you shoot that free throw, you gamble on a game, you get that for two hours. <laughs> I love it. I love it. They argued the fact that they wouldn't feel that way. I went to the studio audience. The studio audience went off on them. And that's the truth. When you, right. when you, yeah, that's, that's, that's the feeling you get for two hours. Every play means something. Every play you think in the first quarter cost you the fourth quarter. It's hysterical. Love it, Brandon. We appreciate it. Thanks so much. Thanks, bud.